Well, thanks so much for singing with us. Thanks for uh, spending some of your Labor Day weekend with us. Uh, it's great to have you here uh, today. Uh, you know, this is a great weekend. We get tomorrow off. We don't have to go another Saturday without football for like seven months. And this is a good weekend. And everyone's happy, right? Ohio State won, Michigan won, and UT won. I don't know about BG, but um, it's a good weekend. Well, this morning, uh, Jake, our kids' pastor, is going to be preaching. And uh, he's got a great verse that he's going to be focused in on. And so I'm excited to hear uh, Jake preach. And so if you guys would give him a nice little welcome. Good morning. Uh, man, that was like, oh, man, you guys worship. Stephen, with the prayer, you guys set the bar really high. Thanks for setting that up to let, you know, help me let everyone down. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll do my best. Um, so Stephen, uh, when he had asked me, if, hey, you want to you teach again? Of course. Like, you, I mean, you're not going to say no. Um, but he always goes, hey, man, whatever you want. And it's always like, oh, yeah, there's only like a huge Bible. Thanks for narrowing that down for me. Um, and so, like, I just poured over scripture and just spent some time trying to, like, just say, like, God, what, what, you know, what do I need? What would you want from me? What, what do you want me to say this weekend? And um, I came across a verse, and um, <clears throat> it is Isaiah 43, 7, if you guys have your Bible, or a phone anymore, right? Like, everyone's like, Bibles? Who needs paper? Like, we'll just put it on our phone. So, um, it says, and what's going on in Isaiah 43, 7, right before this is actually, again, Israel is in you know, captivity. Big surprise, right? Like, they are always in cap captivity. It's like they, they, uh, they do really well, and, and like they, they follow God, and they do all the things they're supposed to, and then time goes, and you know, they kind of forget. And you know, if we leave God by the wayside, they get in captivity. And in this scripture here, um, God is reminding them, like, that he's still there with them. Like, hey, I'm still your God. You know, I'm going to get you out of this. But you need to basically remember why you're created, why man, uh, why God made man, right? So in this right here is this beautiful little nugget. It's very short. It's, it's, I, re, I actually encourage everyone to, to memorize this. It only took me like, you know, an hour to memorize this. I do not have the greatest memory. So, but it says, uh, everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And that for my glory is the part that like stuck out because the reality is, is that um, everybody, right? Everybody, like no one is excluded from this. At some point asks like, well, why am I here? Why am I on this earth? I mean, throughout the ages, people have asked the question, like, what is man here for? Like, why are we smarter than everything else? Like, why do we have, you know, thumbs or, you know, whatever it is that um, we, we have this, this thing in us that needs to know what we're here for and who are we? And uh, we all search for different ways to identify ourselves. And I came up with a few that I started thinking about it. Like, what are some things that aren't necessarily bad in our lives but if we're not careful, they can kind of start to um, cause us to think that's who we are, right? For instance, relationships, right? Like we're all in relationships, whether you're a friend, right? A good friend. I say like a whole row of friends here. There's a ton of young people here, which is awesome, right? So whether you're a friend, a mom, a dad, a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife, like that relationship, right, can start to become uh, our focus in who we think we are. Um, for instance, like if you're a mom or a dad, I know not all of us here are yet, thank goodness. Um, but if you're a mom or a dad, that first time you see that child, that is like amazing. Like I remember uh, my, my firstborn, um, he was like C-section, which was horrible, and I never want to see that again. Um, but when I saw him, I was like, that's amazing. And my second was natural, and I never want to see that again either. So, um, <laughs> but when I, I saw both of them, I was just like, whoa. Like, I'm a dad. This is awesome. And, and I started thinking about all the amazing things that I was going to get to do. And, um, and I do all the time. Like, I coach football, and I get to see my kids grow. And, and my oldest, um, he's playing tackle right now. And, like, he just, we had a scrimmage, and he just drilled this kid the other day. And I was like, yeah. Like, that was awesome, right? But if we're not careful, and, uh, and I hope he, like, you know, he, he did help him up at the end, right? So he's not, like killer out there all the time, but hey, between the whistles, all right, it's football, all right, so, 
But I was super excited. And as a dad, if I'm not careful, that can start to become like my, my everything, my focus. Um, I don't know, and moms, I'm not going to leave moms out. If Listen, don't judge me, okay? But the movie The Purge, all right? Again, don't judge me. If you have seen it, all right, I'm not saying it's a great movie, but I, I did watch the first one. I didn't watch the other ones. But um, just for you that don't know what it is, it's like this weird movie about like what if there was one day in the year that you could like go out and just all crime was legal. You could do whatever. Like somebody wronged you and, and you know, you could go out and you could get back with them, okay? So I started to think about this and I was like, man, you know who would be the most dangerous on a day like that? Like in the movie, they got like young kids. They're like entitled and okay, yeah, okay, sure. But you know who would be the most dangerous? dangerous? Like the helicopter mom. Could you imagine, like, if <laughs> the helicopter mom, like, you know, like, oh, you messed with, you know, little Billy, and, and, and on that day, I'd be like, I'd look at my kids like, dude, who did you mess with this year, all right? Lock the door, shut the windows, because the mom, the helicopter mom, in her Ugg boots and her Chanel purse is coming out, all right? And she's coming for us, right? Because sometimes moms, like, you know, listen, I even tease my own wife sometimes, like, there's a, another, I love movies, so I make lots of movie references. Um, there's like a, I think it's like a late 80s, maybe early 90s movie called, I think it's called Serial Mom, right? And like, what happens is this mom, like, she'll, she'll like, anybody messes with her kids, she ends up killing them. Like, it's kind of a comedy, but it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, that's a comedy, huh? Fun, hilarious. No, but so... For moms and dads, like, if we're not careful, it becomes our everything. It can consume us, right? And so we put all of our focus and all of our attention into raising our children. Or it can be the same, like I said, with friendships or whatever it is, right? So, but that's still not who we are, right? We're more than that, okay? Someday your kids are going to grow, and they're going to make their own decisions, and it happens. Like, people get the empty nest syndrome because they've put all of their attention and their focus into this relationship, and that's a good thing. But we still have to realize we're more than that. We're more uh, made for more than just being a mom or a dad or just to be in relationships. Um, uh, another one is a job or a title, right? Like, we all have a job. Like, I don't just do this. Like, none of our staff is full-time, right? We all have other jobs. And we have to realize, like, I'm not my job. And, and the reality is we spend a ton of time at our jobs, right? Like 50, 40, 50, 60 hours. And I'm not going to leave stay-at-home moms out of this either, right? You like think, well, they don't make money. Listen, stay-at-home moms. It's like any mom, let's, let's give moms that do all the work a round of applause, right? Because like, listen, they, they spend tons of time. Like I get home from work and my wife's like still doing laundry or whatever it is, right? She's doing all sorts of stuff um, all the way until it's bedtime, making lunches, and I, listen, I, I help with some of it, okay? She just doesn't let me fold laundry, because I'm terrible at it. Um, so, but again, our job, or our title, whatever it is, like, you could be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a handyman, a, a, a plumber, it's not who you are. It's something that you do, and it's a good thing, because it's how we, uh, provide for our families. It's, uh, we have needs, right? On this earth, we have needs. We have to have a car, or, or food, you know, We'd feed the children, and, and if you have, like preteens or teenagers, you know you might have to get a second job to feed them. I'm getting there now. Like my kids, like my wife went to the store, and it's like the end of the night. She's like, well, I got to make another click list. I'm like, you just went. What do you mean? And yeah, so you know, like, listen, it's not, our jobs are not who we are either. Um, I have, about jobs, I, ha I have this idea that Disney is no longer the happiest place on earth, right? That's like their thing, right? Disney's the happiest place on earth. If you've ever been there, like, it's, it's not that cool. Um, it's all right. So, but it's, anyway, that's kind of their thing. I have a new idea. The new happiest place on earth, I'm pretty positive, is Chick-fil-A, okay? <laughs> if you've been to Chick-fil-A, their employees are like, all right, another movie reference, Stepford Wives, Okay? Robots, I'm pretty sure Chick-fil-A is changing people in the robots, okay? Because they are like that perfect smile. They're happy. They're like, how may I serve you today? And I'm like, wow, like this is amazing. No one else, like I, other places are trying to copy it now and they just can't. Like I went to Arby's the other day and like, because I love me some mozzarella sticks, right? And they tried like really hard to be Chick-fil-A and they did an excellent job. It was great service, but I don't know, man. Chick-fil-A has got it somehow. But even though like you may be a Chick-fil-A employee and, and the happiest place on earth, right? It's still not who you are. It's still not who you are. It's a way you provide. It's a good thing. You can get some enjoyment out of it, but it's still not who you are. Um, intelligence is another one. I'll go through this one quickly. Like my brother is a huge, like, 
he's my brother, so I can say, he's a huge music snob, right? Like, he's the guy that can hear a song, and like, he sometimes identifies with this, because it's like, it's a pride thing. Like, yeah, I, I heard a song once, and I know all the lyrics, and my mother is not. My mother will know a melody to a song, and like, just hack the words, you know? Like, uh, what's that one? Like, the journey? Like, don't stop, believe. Like, she'd be like, don't stop, shabliebin. And you're like going, shabliebin. And my brother's just like, Bleh. Mom, that's not even words. Like, oh, and he gets, he, gets, he gets upset, right? Because he identifies. He's a smart dude. He identifies sometimes with his intelligence. But he's more than that. And the last one that I have is um, our things. It's an easy one, right? We can, like, have sweet stuff. Um, I know, like, somebody in my neighborhood that's got, like, two Harleys and, like, three four-wheelers and, like, all this awesome stuff. I'm so jealous all the time. I'm not really jealous, but it's pretty awesome. Like, he has a lot of fun. And um, he's got, like, this awesome truck. And, and you know what? It's still not who he is. Like, it's cool to have that stuff. It's not bad to have the stuff. But that is sometimes, you can tell, like, it, it, come, it becomes, like, his everything and not who he is. I have an example. Um, Ronda Rousey, right? Anybody know Ronda Rousey? She was an MA, MA uh, wow, that's a hard thing for me to say, MMA fighter. Okay, all right, she was an MMA fighter. I can say it faster now. She was a, a fighter, and she was the most dominant female fighter, right, um, at the time. And she, uh, she was, I mean, she was destroying everybody, okay? She was even being called, like, one of the greatest athletes or the greatest fighters of all time. And then, listen, in fighting, like, you just get older, and, and eventually the younger ones are just going to beat you, and it happens, right? But she lost, not once, but the second time she lost, she lost, like, quick, Okay. And I have a quote from her here. She was interviewed, and uh, she said directly after um, one of the fights that she was, uh, she was in the medical room. I was down in the corner. This is Ronda Rousey's quote. I was down in the corner. I was sitting in the corner, and I was like, what am I anymore if I'm not this? Okay. And I was literally sitting there and thinking about killing myself in that exact second. I'm nothing. Like, what do I do anymore? And no one gives a bleep about me anymore without this. She identified everything she knew about herself was wrapped up in the fact that she could fight. But her life wasn't over. That was just one part of it. She was a fighter, but that's not all she was. She was made for so much more for that. And actually, I just saw she got married, and, and I think she's getting over um, some of the, the, the issues that she had had. Thank, thank God, you know, that hopefully people are praying for her um, that she would, she would come out of that. But so here, here's what I found. There, there are, those are some things that we, uh, my collar here, uh, those are some things that we may identify ourselves with, right, that are in our lives and, like I said, aren't bad things, okay? Don't, don't misunderstand me. Those, like, it's good to have a job, right? It's good to be a mom or dad or a best friend and all that, but don't get caught up thinking that um, that is all that you are because literally you could remove one of those things and, or all of those things just like Rhonda happened, right? One of those got removed from her life. Was she still valuable in God's eyes? Yeah. Yeah. Did she still have a purpose? Yeah, absolutely. Those are things that we do, but not necessarily who we are. So that begs the question, who are we? Well, if we go back to Isaiah uh, 43.7, I said 34-7. I told Stephen 34-7 the other day, and he looked up the verse, and he goes, uh, yeah, that's not it. It was like something about pigs and unicorns or something, wasn't it? I don't know. It was, it was weird. Anyway, so he was like, that's not it. No, you're right. It's not. Um, Everyone who's called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And so what is God's glory? Like, how do we bring God glory? Because literally, it's simple. Like, People have looked throughout the ages what their purpose is, and it's just right here in a sentence. We're created to bring God glory. So how do we do that? How do we bring God glory? Well, number one, we did it this morning, and we did it super well. Congrats to the band. That was amazing. I, like, you guys know, last time I spoke, I like pride myself in not crying. Almost made me cry, Okay. Almost. <laughs> Danny's like, it's so close. All right, that's just gold next time. So uh, praise, right? Um, Psalm 100, 2 to 3. It says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. Gladness. Man, you can come in here with a heavy heart or stuff, junk's going on in life, but man, if you come in here with some gladness, 
and just start praising God and giving that stuff to him, you're bringing God glory. And you know what? He's going to show up. He's going to be present in that moment. And we know that God is working all things for the good of those that love him. Right? Right? So praise can bring that in. But why praise him? Like, one, God deserves it. Right? Like, that's, oh, like, oh duh. That's easy. But he does. He created us, right? He created the heavens, the earth. He sent his son, Jesus. There's so many things on a list that we could just write out and just say, man, that is a ton of stuff. But he deserves our praise, right? It's easy. Um, and it's true praise that we're reminded of God's greatness. Like all the songs, the beautiful words that are written, they remind us of the greatness, right, of his power and his presence in our lives. These words, they they start to, and that's why, like, I got a little emotional because as I heard some of these words, I started to, in my spirit, realize that, man, God is awesome. And I started to look, and listen, we all got things going on in life, right? Like, no one's life, listen, nobody, when we become Christians, it's not like, oh, everything's going to be hunky-dory and perfect, right? No, stuff still happens. But man, through praise and worshiping, I know that I will sense God's presence. I know that he loves me and that he will be there and work things out for me. Um, praise builds strength in faith, which causes God to move on our behalf. And Psalm 8, 2, through the praise of children and infants, even like children and infants, he's saying, through their praise, right, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Yes, I wrote that right. Okay, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, Avenger? Uh, yeah, gosh, even through kids, God's going to move. Like, their praise is important. He hears their praise. He hears our praise. And through praise, our praise, right, we can bring God's presence in and cause him to move in our lives. Now, let's not, like, let's not forget, right, church Worship is awesome, and I love it, but we can't be just at church. Um, there was a, a ministry we used to go to years and years and years ago, and there was this guy. He was like 6'8", right? He was huge. Like, I looked up to him, but skinny as a rail, and he had a voice like a bullhorn, okay? Like, he could be, you could be, like, on the opposite side of the church and hear this guy, right? He brought all the gladness in the world, and it was funny always because, like, there'd be this giant circle around him that was almost empty, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you'd walk into church and you could see him because he's like up here and you'd be like, oh, there's that dude. I'm going over here, right? And you'd like go sit over here. Listen, he brought all the gladness in the world, man. And like props to him, right? But don't just make that the only place. We got to praise, listen, in your car, like at work, wherever you're at, right? We can just Start to praise God. All right, you don't always have to sing like super loud. You can be like, oh, you know, whatever, under your breath. Sing along. Go crazy in the car. We know you guys do it. I do it. I go crazy in the car. I'm like, like the air drumming, like Phil Collins. All right, so not praising Phil Collins. Though. Um, you young people can look that up. There's some sweet drum solos in there. All right. Um, so, yeah, praise. We bring God glory through our praise. Number two, Stephen, you might, you predicted that. Where is Stephen? I, I can't see him anywhere. He was saying, oh, you know, something that joked about me, like preaching five to seven minutes earlier. He may be right. I think I'm going to be a little early. So you, might, you better get some stuff ready. Get your Bible out. <laughs> All right, number two. I had too much coffee. I think I'm talking too fast this morning. All right, so relationship. Uh, simple one. Again, super easy. Like, dude, way to be obvious. Captain Obvious over here. Um, but we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about relationship because living our lives in rela um, we need to live our lives in relationship and faithful service to God. Uh, Genesis 1, 26, 27, right, says what? Let us make God in our image, right? What does that mean? Essentially, what he's telling us there is that um, because we're created in God's image, our purpose cannot be fulfilled apart from him, right? Like, Whatever it is that we try to do, and I talked about earlier relationships and different things, work and all that stuff, you can try to fulfill your purpose through all of that stuff, right? But no matter what, it always ends up not quite fulfilling us, right? Or it does for like five seconds, and then you're like, oh, yeah, okay, that's over. What's next? That's, that's the thing. It becomes, what's next? What do I do now, right? 
Where with God, when we get a full relationship and loving relationship with God, it's not what's next. We're fulfilled, right? As long as we're continuing that relationship and praising and, and, uh, and, and reading a scripture and all these things, we are fulfilled. In fact, that's the next point through reading scripture. John 15, 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, right? His words, where, where, where do we get his words? Scripture, right? So if they remain in us, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So here, like God's not the magic genie. We know that. Are you not going to like get your Bible and rub on it and, just, and whatever we want, right, comes up. That's not what God's talking about here. But when we get to know God through his scripture, right, our life begins to line up with his will, what his plan is, not just for me, but his ultimate plan, right? The big plan of uh, his kingdom, right? So our lives to begin to line up with that. And when we line up with that, our prayer is no longer going to be like, oh, Lord, I really need that Harley. I really, because I could, I could totally use a Harley. It would be awesome. My wife would never let me ride it, but I'd stare at it. I got a Harley, right? But that doesn't, that's not my prayer anymore, right? My prayer isn't about things that I want or that I think would make me happy. My prayer life, right, through his scripture and my relationship with him, my prayer life is just going to start to line up with his will, and I'm going to start praying about things that are important to God, right, in my life. Like, Lord, you know, um, I have family members that don't know Jesus, like, I'm not praying for the harlot. I'm praying for, Lord, save my family. Lord, save my, my friends or, or the people that I come in contact who don't know you. And through his scripture, my heart begins to change and to be more like him. I cannot encourage you enough to begin to take whatever time it is that you have. Start small. Start, like, don't, listen, I, I'm famous for this. Like, I'm not a huge reader. Like, if I read something, it's either the news or the Bible, okay? I don't read, like, fiction or anything like that because I don't have the attention span for it, okay? So, I mean, it's hard enough to, like, sit down and read my Bible for 30 minutes. I had to, like, work up to that, right? Start small. If it's five minutes in the morning, read some scripture, right? Write it down on a card, um, whatever it is, and start to memorize that and start to get God's word written on your heart and see how, See how that begins to change your thought life, right? See how that begins to change how you react in life, okay? Because instead of, uh, in, sometimes instead of reacting in anger, we got that scripture in us, right? And we're like, oh, man. And that changes us, okay? It begins to change who we are. And in that, we bring God glory. Now, we also have heard of Solomon, right? Solomon was this guy who... Like, you know you all kind of have had this moment in your life where um, Solomon did what? Like, in Ecclesiastes, he went out and he went wild, okay? Like, he did all sorts of crazy stuff. Could you imagine if Solomon happened today, like, with Instagram and all, like, the crazy photos Solomon did? Like, he went out and was hanging with the ladies and partying. Solomon's Instagram, would people would be like, oh, my gosh, look what that guy's doing. Now, you know, like, they would just be all over him and, and, and probably not really like respect what he says later, right? Because at the end, Solomon figures something out. Solomon figures out that the, the idea is, remember, he tried to live for pleasure and it finally came to the conclusion that the only uh, worthwhile life is one of honor and obedience to God. And we come in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whatever is good or evil. Here's what he found out. I partied, I did all of that, it brought me nothing. I was not happy, eh, maybe it was fun for a minute, right? But then it, it fleeted, it was gone, it was whew, smoke in the wind, right? And then he found like, oh, wait, the only real fulfillment I found was in the fact that being obedient to God, following him, allowing his scripture to uh, change my heart, and then affect the way I live, right? That brings glory to God. So we can bring glory to God through our praise and through our relationship in him. My last point here is dominion over earth. Dominion over earth. Hebrews 2, 7 and 8 says, You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. Right? So honor God by your work, 
be a good employee, right? Like, when I was a kid, like, <laughs> my dad is a um, millwright at Jeep, and he's, like, he's amazing. He's been there, like, 45 years, okay? Like, at some point, I think they're going to have to drag him out of there, <laughs> you know, because he, he just, I think he likes what he does. But um, my dad, like, when I was younger, he, um, like, he, you know, like, he believed in God and all that, but he's, like, super devout now, right? He's a, he's a really good Christian, right? But when I was younger, he would fall asleep in the living room. Okay, and like I'd be like sitting there watching TV, and he'd like fall asleep on the couch or something, and all of a sudden, like he'd be dead asleep, he would start swearing like a trucker, like bleep, 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 you stupid, blah, 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 and he'd be like going on and on, and I'd freak me out, and I'd be like, Dad, Dad, are you okay? And he'd wake up, and be like, Oh, I was dreaming I was at work, <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, you're like that at work? Like that was terrifying, right? Um, yeah, like we may want to be like that at work, right? Because we run into like rough situations or there's a boss above us that we don't like or, or, you know, whatever. There's a situation, there's a guy that irks me, irritates me, whatever it is. But literally, we bring glory to God by the way we act at work or the work that we do. In Colossians 3.23 says, Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than than for people. Forget the jerk boss, right? Hey, you got a job to do. Do your job. Pretend he's Jesus, right? Like, I guarantee you, my dad would not talk like that to Jesus, right? Like, at all. Like, he has way too much love and, and, and respect for, for, for Jesus, but he had to change his mindset, right? And, and I showed him this first before, and he was like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Let's just, let's just, let's just sharpie that one out, <laughs> you know? Because that's what we want to do sometimes. But we have to allow, right, one, the praise, our scripture that we've read, we have to allow it to start to come out in the things that we do. And also, use our resources wisely, right? Like, the work that you do, you get money for it. Be wise with it. That's dominion, right? Being responsible, right? And uh, even over, like, the whole earth. Be responsible, right? Like, don't, uh, don't burn the plastics in your backyard or, you know, whatever. I don't know. But just be... Be, I, some, those that laugh must do that, all right. Because the other people are like, oh, yeah, that's right, oh, you know. All right, so use the resources wisely. And finally, the Great Commission. This comes over like dominion because this comes into work. What's the Great Commission in Matthew, right, at the very, very end there? Jesus said, go unto all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And what? He's going to be with us to the end of the ages. What's he want us to do? He wants us to do his work right? Spread his message. Tell others about Jesus and the redemption that he has for them, right? That life-saving grace that he has for them. Um, that's, that's part of our work, and we bring God glory, not just, right? We can do the Great Commission at our job, right? We can do the Great Commission wherever we're at, but we have work to do, okay? We have work to do, and we glorify God when we do it with a good heart and when we do it like we're doing it for Jesus, right? Those are three ways that I came up with through Scripture that I saw we could glorify God and fulfill our purpose in Him. We can praise Him. We can have the relationship. And then in our goings in this earth, we can be good about it. We can have honor, right? We can, have, um, we can be trusted, right? And uh, all of these things. And then, of course, go out and tell others. So the more we get to know our Creator, the more we love Him. And I'm getting ready to wrap up here, so see if you want to get ready. <laughs> the more we get to know our Creator, the more we love Him. The better we understand who we are and what our purpose is, right? And what is that purpose? We're created to bring Him glory. God has unique plans and purpose for each of us. But whatever they are, whatever God's plan is for us as individuals, it is always to bring Him glory. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just, just thank you for your word that, Lord, we would realize that, that all of these things that we would mentioned, the relationships and all that, that they're, they are beautiful things in our life. But, Lord, they are just a part of who we are. They aren't who we are. That, Lord, we would see that you created us for your glory. Lord, help us to carve out that time to help us to uh, make sure that we spend time with you, that we praise you, God, that we lift up our hearts and our words and uh, speak your goodness in our lives, and that, Lord, your presence would be known there. God, that you, we would just continue to work 
in our lives, that your scripture would uh, work on our hearts and change what comes out of us, that, Lord, we would uh, be known, be known to be your follower, that, Lord, we could also go out and just spread your message, Lord, and uh, do the work, do your work, Lord, that people would know you and come to know you and the redemption that you have for them. Lord, help us just to be good followers and uh, good uh, children of God, Lord. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stephen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. What a timely message. Tomorrow, our country will celebrate, I guess, if that is the right word, or remember work, right? And we take a day off to remember work, which is ironic. But uh, what a great reminder that every day you and I wake up and we look at a day and we decide what we're going to do with it. We invest time into it. We invest money into it. We invest relationally into it. And there's a purpose under every day of your work and every day of your life to bring him glory. And so I would examine, uh, if I were you, and this is what I'm going to do out of that, I'm going to look at all three of those things and ask, God, is there one of those where there's an absence of me bringing you glory through that? Is there a way where I can bring you more glory as I begin to invest into one of those more than I have been? The praise that he talked about at the beginning, uh, it is something that you and I every day wake up and we decide what we're going to worship. We decide what we're going to worship that day. If it's going to be God or if it's going to be one of those other things that he uh, explained are so easy for us uh, to worship. Keller says this, our hearts are idol factories. And every time and every day uh, we look for something to worship. When he brought up Ronda Rousey's story, the first thing that came to mind is this. Uh, she was worshiping fighting and that status as a fighter. And it went away. And here's the natural tendency when something goes away. We just find a new one. We just replace the idol with something new. And so we um, leave one relationship, and when, what do you see? You enter a new one. You, you leave one career that was so fulfilling, what do you do? You either fall apart or you find that next one that is so fulfilling. In those moments, what it begins to reveal is potentially where the idol of the heart is. And what Jake is reminding us this morning is to point that back toward Christ. Christ. 